So hello everyone. Welcome to this new video. So till now in our previous videos we have solved uh, many kind of complex networks related to source transformation, source shifting, star delta transformation, delta star transformation. We have seen different different kinds of networks. Okay, the different different places where the connections of the branches meet and uh, different kinds of networks we have seen. Again, in this topic, we are going to see one more different kinds of networks where the uh, the connections would be in loops. Okay, like this one, closed loops here. Okay, and that concept is called as mesh analysis or loop analysis. One question from this topic is fixed. Okay, you should. It is hundred percent sure that one question will be definitely coming for ten marks in in case of mesh analysis or loop analysis. Okay. Very easy concept. Easily you can score ten marks. Okay, nothing much rocket science is there in this. Just listen to it very, listen to me very carefully. Okay, don't skip any part of the video. Watch till end. Like the video before you start watching, and also watch our previous video. Those who haven't watched. So let's continue. So here consider a closed network. Here I have considered closed network with one voltage source and uh, like this resistances here. The points are node points are A, B, C, D. A to B, I have considered one resistor R1, B to C R3, and C to D R5. And from B to G here, I have considered R2, C to F R4, D to E R6, and I have drawn it in a closed path here with the three loops here: loop one, loop two, loop three. Where the direction of loop is from here. Okay, it starts from here and ends at here. It starts from here, ends at. Okay. You can consider even the opposite direction, no problem. Okay, it's not that you should be considering only this direction, but uh, some of the values would be getting changed. Not values, the current directions and the values of current should be getting changed. So you can consider any direction, no problem. So like this, in this simple network, I've considered these three loops, and now we should be knowing the concept of KVL in this case. What is KVL? Kirchhoff's voltage law. This we have already studied in PU. I've just uh, recall the concept that is Kirchhoff's voltage law stands for the number of input voltages coming, okay, inside, and when it comes to the output side, that would be equal to zero. That is, for example, in this case, we are having three currents. So if you consider three voltages, that is V1 plus V2 plus V3 equal to zero. That is the sum of all the voltages is equal to zero. Okay, in case of Kirchhoff's voltage law. On applying KVL through each loop, we find we can find the current for flowing through the loops by attaining the following loop equations. Okay, we should be attaining the loop equations in this case, and we should be finding the current through each loop. Okay, our goal here in this case we should be finding the current through each loops, and we should be uh, writing the final answer. So here in this case we have three loops. So we should be finding three currents. That is, I have named here. In case of loop one, we can also call it as loop one or loop I one. Loop two or I two, loop three or I three. Okay. So now consider loop one that is A B G H A. So in this case, apply KVL. Whenever you apply KVL, the equation of KVL is for voltages. That is V one plus V two plus V three equal to zero, right? So whenever apply KVL at loop one. So consider this loop one here. In this loop one, we have considered the direction of loop to be from here to here, right? So whenever we see, we should be considering the outward signs of all the uh, components. That is, voltage source, resistors, resistors, or whatever are there. See, for example, here first we have one voltage source E. Okay, its outward sign is plus. So we should be writing plus E first. Okay, that is one voltage source. Next we have one resistor here, but we know that in in case of KVL we should be having a volt value of voltage only. So that's why. Along with this resistor, we should be considering the loop current I1 also. That is minus I1 R1. I told you that you should be considering the outward sign. Outward sign of this resistor is this is plus and this is minus. So the outward side is minus. So I have written minus sign I1 the loop current and R1 the resistor. Since we know that I into R that is I into R is equal to V or V equal to I R. So that's why I have written here I1 R1 so that this KVL would be getting satisfied. Similarly, now minus I1 minus I2 into R2. Why I have written I1 minus I2? Because this resistor R2 is common for both the loops. This is in between both these loops. That is I1 and I2. So that's why I have written I1 minus. Why I have written? Because see here, this outside minus you understood it. Why I have written? Because this is the outward sign here minus. When we come 
the when the whenever the loop direction is like this, the outward sign is minus. So minus of i one. I have written at this. So why this minus? Because if you see here, this resistor loop direction. Whenever we see from here, it is minus, and for this loop, it is opposite. So here we have minus, right? For this loop, the the direction is here plus minus. Okay, so that's why here the outward sign is minus for this loop. So that's why I consider minus I two into R two. Whenever we have any resistance between the loops, you should be considering both the currents and writing that. Okay, now nothing much to do. Simple max substitute the uh, take the brackets and multiply these two terms. Solve it, and we will be getting one equation like this. Okay, name it as equation one. Similarly, do for loop two as well as loop three. I've written it. You can copy down if you want and understand how these equations are written as I've explained you. Okay, analyze these equations for similarly for loop two and loop three. Like these three equations, you should be attaining. And here we are have we have written the values of currents and resistances. But whenever we solve the problem, we would be having the values of resistances. Okay, that I would be telling you while solving the problem itself. Okay, so like this, you should be attaining the loop equations. Then what to do? By these loop equations, we can find the corresponding value of currents I one, I two, and I three through each loops. That I'll tell you while solving the problems. Okay, how to find the currents? It's very easy. Some of the calculation uh, uh, calculation tricks and uh, by using the calculator, it would be very easy. Okay, I'll tell you that. So hope this concept is clear about mesh analysis. So this that's all of the brief description about mesh analysis. So now we have two problems. Let's solve those two problems now. Very easy problems. Okay. So this is the first question here of mesh analysis. So using mesh analysis, find the current through this four ohm resistor. Okay, you should be finding the current through this four ohm resistor using mesh analysis, where they have given one voltage source forty volt, another voltage source here as ten volt. Seeing the direction here, this is plus minus, this is minus plus. Okay, so hope this you might be knowing the longer line is plus and shorter line is minus. This voltage source symbol, hope you might be knowing. Okay, and this is one complex circuit where we are having two loops in this case. Okay, and I told you that we should be knowing the concept of KVL. So now, without wasting any time, this is loop one and this is loop two. So consider loop one. Apply KVL on loop one. Loop one. That is, we know that KVL is sum of all the voltages is equal to zero. So that is first write uh, if you want. That is V one plus V two plus V three equal to zero in order to avoid confusions. Okay, start from here. See the outward signs. This is plus. Since this is a voltage source only, so directly write plus forty. Okay, and see the outward signs here. When when we when the loop is going here, so this is the outward sign minus. So minus. Write the value of resistance eight along with the loop current here I one. Okay, so that's why I've written I one here. Similarly, check for outward sign here. This is minus. So minus four. Into because this four ohm is between these two loops. So what I've told you first, write the uh, uh, low, uh, lower loop current. That is first loop current should be writing at first. Okay, I one minus I two because I've told you right for this loop this is the negative outward sign and for this loop here this is the negative outward sign. Okay, so that's why we will be getting here minus I two. So we have written V one, V two, V three is equal to zero. Okay, so now nothing much to do. Simplify the equation. Forty minus eight i one multiply this minus four i one minus minus plus four i two equal to zero. That is forty minus eight minus four is minus twelve i one plus four i two equal to zero. Okay, like this you've got one equation. Name it as equation one. Okay, this is the first loop equation for loop one. So now for loop two again do the same thing. Apply KVL. That is, if you want, you can start from anywhere. So I'm starting from this point now. Okay. Now from this point, if you look, if you start from here, this is plus and this is minus outward sign. So minus four into since this four ohm is between these two loops, but we are considering loop two. So that's why write first I two minus I one. Then next is six ohm. This is plus and minus minus six, and the loop current is I two. Then we have plus ten equal to zero. That is now multiply minus four i two plus four i one 
minus 6i2 so if you want to write this 10 first okay equal to 0 that is 10 plus 4i1 minus 4 minus 6 is minus 10i2 equal to 0 so this is one more equation name it as equation 2 so now we have got these two loop equations now nothing more to do we should be solving these two loop equations using calculator very easy i am going to tell you how to solve that is in order to solve this you should be finding the values of i1 and i2 i have told you right our goal is here to find the loop currents i1 and i2 so here we have equation we have already solved these kind of problems in uh, third sem max okay we were having this uh, in a curve fitting correlation and regression how to solve i have already told you okay here we should be finding two constants i1 and i2 so that is in the calci press mode setup and press here equation it uh, the number is 5 then select since here we have three constant values that is 40 12 4 okay three constant values so here we have a b c so consider one sometimes whenever we have three loop currents you should be considering two okay so here in this case since we have only two loop currents consider this one press one and here we will be getting one this matrix here here what we should be filling is first we should be filling the value of whatever is there that is whatever this the coefficient of i1 first we should be filling that in the first line first line stands for first equation and second line stands for second equation first value always the coefficient of i1 second value always the coefficient of i2 third value is whatever the uh, single constant is there right that we should be filling okay hope this is clear in this way let's fill the value here in the first equation coefficient of i1 is minus 12 write minus 12 press equal to so now that minus 12 would be stored there then automatically it will be shifting to next place it asks the value of b that is the coefficient of i2 plus 4 press equal to it would be stored final value is 40 so now it comes down consider the second equation again first write coefficient of i1 4 next we have minus 10 next we have plus 10 now all the values are stored finally press equal to again then we would be getting our two values one is x and one is y that is the x stands for i1 y stands for i2 so here we got the value of x here as so sorry guys i have missed one step here final equation should be of this form that is minus 12 i1 plus 4 i2 is equal to the constant should be written here okay that i missed that one step so that's say what would be happening here this plus 40 if it comes to other side it should be minus 40 similarly here 4 i1 minus 10 i2 is equal to minus 10 okay so make please do this correction here after that we should be naming it as equation 1 2 or 3 yeah so i have written these two equations now now write the coefficients of i1 i2 then constant so here we have minus 12 4 minus 40 4 minus 10 minus 10 so now we would be getting our two roots x stands for i1 current that is 4.2 amps okay next we have y that is 2.2 7 amps 2.69 you can round it off to 2.7 so like this we should be getting the current okay hope oh, this is clear how to put in the calculator after solving loop equations like this you would be getting the values of i1 and i2 but our goal is they have asked here to find the current through 4 ohm resistor that is 4 ohm is here but we know that 4 ohm lies between these two loops so that's why what we should be doing is current through 4 ohm is equal to i1 minus i2 that is 4.2 minus 2.7 why because since this is between these two loops but the greater current here in this case is i1 not i2 we know that the current value cannot be negative it would be always be positive so that's why whichever is the greater current that minus the lower current okay whenever we have a resistance between the two loops so here that's why i've written here i1 minus i2 I of 4 ohm is equal to 4.2 minus 2.7 so that is equal to 1.5 amps current through 4 ohm so in this way we should be solving for 
mesh analysis or loop analysis is this clear guys yeah so now we have one more problem let's solve it so this is that problem again the similar kind of problem no change in this case we are having three currents that is i1 i2 i3 and three loops we should be solving for three loops the method is same not much so without wasting time let's solve first consider loop 1 that is this loop i1 apply kvl for that start from here the outward sign is plus since this is a voltage only so plus 100 then this is the outward sign minus 6 along with the loop current i1 since it is r into i that is equal to v so that's why according to kvl minus 6 i1 then we have we have this minus 4 into since this 4 ohm resistor is between these two loops but we are considering loop 1 first so that's why i1 minus i2 okay so that's all that is equal to 0 so now solve this 100 minus 6 i1 minus 4 i1 minus minus plus 4 i2 equal to 0 that is 100 minus 10 i1 minus 6 minus 4 minus 10 plus 4 i2 equal to 0 that is minus 10 i1 plus 4 i2 equal to 100 bring it that side minus 100 so this is our equation name it as equation 1 okay similarly for loop 2 now apply kvl for loop 2 that is this loop start from here plus minus this is the outward sign here so minus 4 into since this 4 ohm is between these two loops but we are considering loop 2 i2 minus i1 in this case here we have written i1 minus i2 because we are considering this loop now we are considering loop 2 so i2 minus i1 then next is minus 2 and the loop current is i2 next we have again 4 ohm that is minus 4 into since this 4 ohm resistor is between i2 and i3 so i2 since we are considering loop i2 minus i3 equal to 0 so solve this again minus 4 i2 minus minus plus 4 i1 minus 2 i2 minus 4 i2 minus minus plus 4 i3 equal to 0 that is first write 4 i1 then minus 4 minus 2 minus 4 that is minus 10 i2 then plus 4 i3 equal to 0 ok this is the second equation then similarly solve for the third loop loop 3 apply kbl start from this 4 ohm itself so outward sign is minus 4 and loop 3 so current i3 minus i2 in this case now since this is between i2 and i3 but we are considering for loop 3 so this is 6 ohm minus 6 loop current is i3 so here the outward voltage is here minus sign if you look from here so minus 50 because this is a voltage source i am writing it directly 50 then here we have minus 8 i3 equal to 0 so solve this minus 4 i3 plus 4 i2 minus 6 i3 minus 50 minus 8 i3 equal to 0 so what we have here 4 i2 minus 4 minus 6 minus 8 that is minus 8 minus 6 minus 14 minus 4 minus 18 i3 equal to bring this minus 50 to other side that would be equal to plus 50 this is the third equation here name it as equation 3 so now using these three equations solve for i1 i2 and i3 ok but in the question they have asked current through this 2 ohm resistor here now this 2 ohm resistor but this 2 ohm resistor is not between any loop so we can say that this 2 ohm resistor lies in this loop that is loop i2 so that is whatever the value of i2 we get that only would be our current through 2 ohm resistor ok so now let's see what is the value of i2 we get but in order to get the value of i2 we should be solving for these 3 loops so that's why we have written the 3 loop equations ok so now the same thing here take the calci here press equation so press 5 but here since we have 3 loop currents I have told you we should be pressing number 2 ok so like this you will be getting one th 3 lines here you can see here 1 2 3 A B C and D we have one more option of D because we have 4 values to be filled that is one is for I1 one is for I2 
one is for i3 coefficient that is zero in this case and one is the final year okay yeah so first is coefficient of i1 minus 10 then it is plus 4 coefficient of i2 since we don't have i3 so that's why you should be considering zero you cannot neglect that put the value of zero next is minus 100 next is here 4 minus 10 4 0 next is here we have i1 value we don't have so 0 4 minus 18 and 50 Press equal to, we would be getting three values x, y, z. X stands for I one, so here the value is eleven point five three eight amps. Next y we would be getting that is I two three point eight four six amps. Next is z that is minus one point nine two three amps. So like this we got three loop currents. But here according to our condition, current through this two ohm resistance is equal to I two that is. So our answer is I of two ohms is equal to three point eight four six amps. Okay. So in this way we should be solving this problem here. Hope this is clear. So that's all for this session, guys. We have solved two problems related to mesh analysis and have introduced with the topic of mesh analysis. So please, those who do not understand the this concept, please look at this video, watch this video till the end. Very easy concept and very fixed question. Okay, this is a sure question for ten marks. So please don't skip this concept. Like this video, share this channel to a huge number. Share this playlist of network analysis to a huge number, especially for backlog students and third semester students. Also, it is uh, available in our description. Those who want other subjects related to electromagnetic theory, control system, and all those who are having backlogs, it is available in our description. You can check it out. So that's all. Thank you.